Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Amodo Namie's latest studio album, Genix. So as you can see, I bought the DVD and album version. Um, normally I would buy the Blu-ray, but I didn't really like the cutouts and how they had used that on the Blu-ray version, so I opted for the DVD. I was really pleasantly surprised by the outer case. I could tell from the photos on Amazon that it was kind of like a brushed steel sort of look, but in person it looks a lot shinier than it does online. So it's pretty classy looking. This is the interior, so this is the album, this is the DVD, and this is the full album cover without the cutout. So I think Namie looks very pretty in this album and the photo shoot for all the album covers. I will say she does touch her face too much lately in her album covers and in photo shoots in general. She should just leave her hands out of the picture. So I have to say I was a little bit disappointed with the amount of photos that were included in the booklet. There's only a few and honestly I may have preferred this photo to the one we got on the cover. Okay, there's actually only two in here. <laughs> it also comes with this insert which is uh, I believe a guide for the DVD or like the lyrics with the DVD. And I do really like this detail on the inside flap. It has Namie Amodo kind of embossed or printed on the inside right there. So overall, my feelings about Genic is that it is a little bit stronger of an album to me than Uncontrolled or Feel. So without further ado, let's just get into reviewing each of the tracks. So the title track is the first track called Photogenic, which I'm guessing is what Genic is referring to on the title of this album. I'll be honest, I find this song a little juvenile, like Namie is singing about how photogenic she is and how beautiful she is and stuff, and I just find it a little strange, but that being said, it is really a catchy song. After I listened to it a couple times through, I just got it stuck in my head all the time, especially this way she sings freaking photogenic. So overall, it's a kind of cute song, but it doesn't change my life in any way, and it's definitely not my favorite on this album. Oh, and this song is in English. I was hoping Namie would do a little bit more Japanese work on this album, but she kind of continued the trend she started on uncontrolled and feel with doing a lot of English content and it's slowly improving. It's still not perfect by any means. Track two is Time Has Come and I really really like this song. I like the kind of jangly guitar that the song opens with and reappears during the choruses. I will say that I wish Namie brought it more vocally on the choruses. She sounds a little dead and robotic and I wish she just brought a little more emotion to this track but overall I do really like it. Track three is the infamous Golden Touch. This song was kind of a breakout hit for Namie in an international way. It reached millions and millions of hits on the music video and it was featured on BuzzFeed and a lot of people saw this video who would not normally see a J-pop video which was a pretty big achievement. On top of that, this song features a little Japanese which I thought was just an extra bonus to promoting J-pop internationally. And I really love this song, I actually think this is my favorite song on the album. It's so classically pop, it's so catchy. Namie does struggle a little with the L's in this song but I can kind of excuse it just by how adorable this song is. I love the kind of like higher, airier way she's singing in this song. It's really adorable. So for the original music video for the song, Namie doesn't appear in it too much. She's in like one or two scenes, but you guys have probably seen it. It's a video where you're supposed to put your finger in the middle of the screen and then all these things are happening um, kind of like around where you're touching on the screen. And I think that's why the video kind of blew up on the internet. It was like an interactive video that was really um, intelligently designed and shot. And since then, Nami has released a recut of that promotional video and it features her a lot more in the video. And I'm actually kind of mad about it because that video is not included on this album. Um, in order to get a hard copy of that video, you have to buy it at Namie's venue for her live tour. I'm overall just really happy with the song and really just impressed that she was able to kind of break the international market with it. Track four is Birthday. Um, this is another song that received a video and it's a really cute video. Um, I really have to praise Namie for looking so happy and alive in the video and not as like robotic and dead face like a lot of people like to criticize her for. The song is all in English so it's really easy to understand the meaning of it. It's about discovering the new you and it's about a birthday celebrating that and not actually your real birthday. I don't totally get the lyric in this make a wish because I'm a blow it. <laughs> but I do like the song okay. It's not my favorite but I don't skip it either. It's kind of 
kind of just middle of the road on the album for me. The next track is It, and I really like this song. It feels a little more mature compared to the last couple we've heard, and this is one of those songs where I can see this being a little popular overseas and it's making me hope that Namie will make an official debut over here in North America. And I do really like this song. This is probably my top four on the album. It's not quite up there, but it's still pretty good. My only complaint about the song is that it's way too short. It's under two minutes and I wish it kind of been extended and had another verse added to it. I think it could have really benefited from that. The next song is Scream and I'm not too partial to this song. It's an EDM heavy song and it's very reminiscent of Feel and Uncontrolled, which I didn't like. It's just a little too generic for me, and it kind of flies under the radar amongst a few way stronger tracks on this album. The next song is Fashionista, and I saw a lot of people praising this song and saying it was their favorite or one of their top favorites on the album, and I really don't get why. Well, I know she didn't write the song, but whoever came up with this concept came to Fashionista, like no one uses that term here, and it just sounds a little uncool, and again, very juvenile, and it really, especially the chorus, course makes me picture doll commercials for little girls like the song would be perfect for a Barbie commercial <laughs> and she also says check my swag at the end of the chorus which I found pretty hilarious I'm not gonna lie <laughs> The next song is Fly, and I do like this song okay. I feel like the intro to the song is a little weak, but I like the chorus a lot. It kind of reminds me of Namie's style sort of in past future, maybe a little before that. It does feel like a filler track to me, just the lyrics are a little bit too generic, and I would like to see Namie get a little more creative at this point in her career. She's been doing this for a long time. She's such a veteran of J-pop, and I just want to see her step it up um, creatively at this point. The next track is Be Who I Want To Be featuring Hatsune Miku. And I guess Namie will just collaborate with anyone or anything now with like dogs or rocks or literally anything because this was the most unexpected collaboration I've ever seen in my life. I don't like their voices together. If you guys don't know, Hatsune Miku is a vocaloid which means she's actually a computer program and not an actual vocalist. Her voice just sounds very kid-like compared to Namie's and overall it's an okay song. When I first heard it I was kind of like taken aback by how weird it was and I didn't really like it but I kind of had to give it a few listens to let it kind of um, marinate. I don't know. <laughs> I could really live without Miku's voice on this track. The next track is Stranger and I know I was just saying that I don't like EDM or Namie's EDM but this is such a good song. It is the strongest EDM song that Nomi has ever done in my opinion. It's one of her few EDM songs that I actually will sit down and listen to and not skip over it when I'm listening to the album. It's a much more sophisticated beat than what we heard on Uncontrolled. The use of vocal filters is pretty minimal and it suits the song and there's a little bit of Japanese and the English is okay. I have no major complaints about this song. It's in my top three, probably my second or third favorite song. Yeah, my third favorite. The next song is Every Woman, and I don't like this song really at all. <laughs> I don't like Namie's rap, like I have complained about her before. She needs to leave that rapping alone, like it doesn't suit her at all. And this song is just is really generic, it's such a filler, it's totally skippable to me. The next song is Space Invader, and this is my second favorite song on the album. This is such a cute song, and even though Nami is struggling a little bit with the English, it's not too noticeable. I don't think it's too bad. The song is pure pop. I think it has just enough substance to kind of stand out on this album and I really like the instrumentals in this. I think this song overall is really strong. It's right behind Golden Touch for me. My only complaint is in the final chorus I was expecting Yamie to kind of bring it a lot more emotionally with her voice and she kind of just laid back and rested on it a bit which I didn't really like. The next song is Anything and it's a slow tempo kind of ballad and it's kind of like an inspirational song and I really feel like she wrote the song for her son saying that he could do anything he wanted. Nami put out a video for this song and the video is very, very heavy on symbolism and a lot of Nami's fans have been kind of trying to figure out what exactly all the different scenarios in the video mean. So Nami is wearing this kind of dumpy outfit, I don't like it in the video, walking down this catwalk through these different rooms where all these like seemingly random things are happening like breaking plates and I don't even know but 
Yeah, if you guys have any theories about that video, let me know in the comments down below. This song is all in English and she probably does the best with her English pronunciation in this song on the album. Maybe because it is a slow tempo and she can kind of take her time pronouncing everything, but vocally it's a pretty good performance and I do really like this song. The next and last song is What I Did For Love and this song is actually by David Guetta, I think that's how you say his name, featuring Namie. I don't particularly like this song, I feel really disappointed that the album ended on this song and I kind of just want to believe that anything was the last song. I just find it's a little dated sounding. It's a little too repetitive and there's nothing too original with the instrumentals or Namie's performance. I would have liked to hear a little more darker of a tone with this subject, but that didn't come out and just overall I was pretty disappointed with this, especially with her being on a track with David Guetta. I thought it would be a lot stronger, but... So that has been the album Genic by Amuro Namie. Yeah, so overall I am enjoying this album. There were a few misses and a few hits, so I did think it was a lot stronger than Uncontrolled and Feel, like I said. And I'm looking forward to what Namie is doing in the future. What do you guys think about Namie coming to North America? Do you think it's a possibility? And I really want to know what you guys thought of this album. Let's talk about it in the comments down below. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Burl, it's going to be about writing and art and creativity and the processes surrounding that. And it's not really going to be about Japan or J-pop or anything like that, but I thought a few of you might be interested in it anyway.